Speaking of flying, so I fall asleep on the plane and I wake up to them talking about this conspiracy. Boeing, uh, they're tanking the company. And like all this shit about how the inspectors are not doing a good job on inspecting the planes. They're only giving them two hours to do it in the hopes that these planes will fall apart. And I wake up to this in the <laughs> middle of turbulence. <laughs> And I'm just baked. You know I hit a little eddy before I got on the plane. Just breathe. Just breathe. If you're going to die, you're going to die. There's nothing you could do about it. Just let it happen. Yeah, that'd be wild. It was That's ridiculous. Right. Well, all right. All right. Battle raps because I've shaken grown men to the point that they can't even face their own friends. Ah, that's why they rhyme about jewels, not life, because the ice on which they skate in is so thin. All right. All right. Here we are. We're back with the boys. Welcome Hello. to the Party with Strategy podcast. A couple special guests. You guys may have heard of them if you're a TikTok user. <laughs> Virality. We're famous. You know. The No Good Boys. Welcome back. We're uh, we're in their studio, Houston, Texas edition. And uh, I got some questions for you guys. Thank God. Oh, I'm excited. What do you got? <laughs> um. Well, first... Tell me what's happening off of uh, your TikTok video, because I just learned you, I mean, you just told me this, but tell the people, because it's pretty fucking cool. It's pretty crazy, actually, for an artist to just have a video of an original song that you guys did go viral, and then now people are really getting to see you and what you do and how talented you are and catching on and following, and I guess, I mean, like, that's how you do it, you know? You light a little spark that catches fire and it yeah i mean we've been posting on talk five times a week for like three years and probably have gotten like 30 views in total and so forever it's just been like fuck tiktok fuck the algorithm uh but then we just had one pop off and a bunch of people found our music an original song thank yeah thank the Lord. god yeah, yeah that's great and what do you think it was like i know every time i've posted something that's gone hard like that you're like all right what time was it who so no, was, it's, no, it's it's the hook. That's all it is. What it's do you mean? The text you put on the video that they read first, or it's mm -hmm. the first thing you say, because it has to make half the people happy and it has to make half the people mad. Okay. Now, does like TikTok understand that and then put you in the algorithm? Like, I think it just it... it just makes people watch. It makes me watch. Mm -hmm. If if I agree with something or if I disagree with it, I'm gonna you know watch the rest of the video. But for oh, all our videos that. All our videos that have gotten some success, it's because of the hook. That's what all the comments are about. And the hook on this one was? Uh, we said, uh, this is bass music and Chopped and Screwed had a baby. Mm. And for some people, like if they're, you know, from Houston, they listen to DJ Screw, you know, if, maybe if they're an old head and they might be like, this isn't fucking Chopped and Screwed. Well, it's not it's screwed not screw unless. DJ Screw did it. Yeah. But some people are like, this is, like, what I needed. Like, all love from Houston. Like, y'all are definitely from here. And we're like, oh, shit. So, like, yeah. half a lot haters, of love half hate. lovers. Yeah. yeah. That, that's the recipe for sure. Yeah. And, like, we, I mean, obviously it's not chopped and screwed. But it worked by just putting that text on there. Yeah. yeah. And what would, like, you posted it and did it immediately? Was it just, like, getting likes, 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 likes? And you're like, oh, shit, this is taking off. We posted it at night. And I remember going to sleep. And I saw it, like, gaining some traction. And then we woke up and had gained like 10,000 followers. Over yeah, there. he woke up. He's like, our, our TikTok's low-key popping off. And I wake up a little later than him. And I looked at it. I was like, damn, 41,000 plays? All right. And then we get to the studio. And I'm like, yo, we're at like 70,000 plays. By the end of the day, we're at like 200,000 plays. And it just keeps going up. And you legit, you had 300 TikTok followers before that. Something 300, like that, yeah. 300. Yeah. Now we're and at like... Almost 20K. Yeah, like 18K or yeah. something in a week. That's absolutely bananas. It was pretty yeah. exciting. And That's think, like, we had a video for the, the book shit go viral, but we didn't get any followers off of that. Yeah, because it's just, like, something people watch, and then they're like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. It's not, like, something you created where people are like, damn, I need to follow these guys because I want more. Yeah, like, that. what else are these people doing? Yeah. Yeah. It was very motivating because there's, okay. there's times where, you know, I'll, we'll probably make music till we die, whether we make it or not, whether it gets popular or not. But there's times where we're like, man, how how much longer do we do this? Like <laughs> yeah, 30, 30 35, like, 
you know, how much longer do we not have like a steady job and just try this shit? But then something like that happens and we're like, oh shit. It gave us a big boost on listens, like publicity. People seem to like it, what we do. So yeah, direct it's pretty exciting. It went straight over to Spotify. Like we went from 3000 monthly listeners to 20,000 in a week. Yeah. That's amazing. Now I just wonder like, okay, has this happened to Frugal? Do you know? Has he? Has this like? Has he had a he, video pop? He off popped off it? before TikTok. Okay. Um, and he went viral through like the Spotify algorithm before like the pandemic. Mm, and okay. he's had some TV show placements to where I'm sure people might have. I think that happened because it popped off on oh, Spotify really? and they okay. found him. Yeah. I'm um, just wondering. I'm like, how do you make the most of it? Like, you got to talk to someone who who has gone through this and would be able to be like, all right, now you got to do this. Yeah. Cause you know, this is happening. So put this out, people will feed off of this, whatever. Like, we, we've just know. been interacting with every single person that commented. We replied to every comment. There's like, you know, 5,000 of them. That's dope. So just trying to like build relationships with these. I mean, th- we consider someone liking our music as a lead, you know, mm-hmm. like if this is sales. So we're like, Oh, these are hot leads. Like we need to like make this sale. So they're a fan of ours forever. Yeah. Yeah, that's tight. That's super tight. Yeah, yeah, that's very awesome. super motivating for sure. Yeah. It's motivating, and but yeah, I mean, like, how shitty is it? Because I go through this all the time, especially with this pod. I mean, every yeah. other week, I'm like, should I even be fucking doing this? Like, what am I doing? You know, you post a video and it gets 500 plays, and you're like, what? You know, it's like ruins your day it like yeah. fucking it really hurts. but it does yeah. and it makes you question what you're doing but then you have something like this happen and it's the complete opposite you're like oh, it's amazing i'm a genius keep going yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> happening fucking, we're celebrities dude. i was I messing know. with my girlfriend i'm like how's it feel <laughs> <laughs> you're dating, you're dating someone's lead. famous yeah <laughs> but no <nah, it's, laughs> yeah it's super motivating for sure yeah there's people like we you know we try to get those hooks we have a new single coming out next week and we're like oh, this is like if Zoo and Troy Boy, you know, met mm. or whatever. And people, we were like, oh, this sounds like this and this. People are starting to comment. They're like, no, it sounds like you. That was great. And yeah. I was like, fuck, that's, that's sick. Yeah. yeah. I started crying. Yeah. <laughs> I, I cry every night reading these comments. <laughs> that's big. <laughs> no, yeah, it's really cool. To, and it feels like like it's fi- something's finally happening. Like people are like, where have you been? I'm like. In the trenches for here? years. Yeah. <laughs> posting as much as we can. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's awesome. And then it's got to feel even better to add on top of that. You did a dope show on Sunday, Sunday yeah. afternoon mm-hmm. with, uh, what's the name of the, of John Luis uh, and Tito's? With, yeah, Jean Louis, they go by Noches and they fucking make incredible music. We shot a bruise music video for the song that went viral, actually. Oh, yeah. We shot a music video for Bruce, and he was casted as the star for the music video. That's yeah. right. And you don't even, that video is not out. No, the director, Sammy, please put out the video. Yo, um, and that, <laughs> yo, did you hit him up and let him know, like, yo, this song's going hard right now? Like, we need um, to fucking get this video? Because that could be that's another. That's perfect, yeah. I should hit him up again. We've talked to his coworkers, and they're like, yeah, he says he's going to edit it. But, yeah, oh. we shot that video over a year ago. Yeah, you need to let him know, like, right this now is the, is time, the fucking yeah. time. Yeah. Because that actually could be the way, you know, sometimes that's how shit works out. When you first shot the video, the song's, like, at this point old now, right? And you're like, you're like, damn, we don't have the video, fuck it, whatever, on to the next. But now the song's popping. Get him to fucking finish it up, follow up with the video. That that could work out perfectly. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, maybe it happened for a reason, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's a dope-ass fucking video. We rented, like, a, a flight. Like, where they, like, hold airplanes, like a hangar. Yeah. And we invited, like, f- 50 extras. We threw a party in this fucking warehouse. And Jean-Louis was the star, and he's insane. He, like, licked a man's face for one of the shots and shit. Yeah, he goes wild. hard. He sent in an audition tape, and it was fantastic. Yeah, it was And really he's like, good. this guy's flying in from New York. I bought his ticket last minute. He came. We, we did the thing. He was a great dude. We ended up going to get something to eat after the shot after the shoot and it was like three four in the morning and we just hit it off boys, felt like yeah. we've known him forever and he's just a crazy nomadic as rc as you can get yes like, 100%. He'll, he'll show up to our house bleeding and dirty from the shoot day before yeah. and he's just like i'll sleep on the floor if i have to and 
Yeah, he's respect up. to that dude. Yeah, we were talking about it earlier. Like, I don't have that in me, and that's <laughs> he has and, it. And yeah. I don't. An animal, yeah, I fully understand that. I don't think I could be the best at anything. I could be good at something and do it well and be consistent. I think is my thing, but like to be the best at something, you got to have whatever the fuck that kid has. Mm. He is he's a wild boy. Yeah. Check him out. Check yeah. him out. He's he's no chance. Let me check out this computer though, real quick, because I'm not about to have what fucking just happened. We just started, bro. I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just want to Are we gonna edit that out? Yeah, we, we can have Diamond Cut cut that out. Sorry. All right. Better safe than sorry. But yeah. JL, he's a wild boy. Legend. John Louis, no chase. And uh, I really liked when you were explaining to me how you guys set up the show that you did because it's a no good show, right? And then you had these guys come on with you. And then you were telling me, like, you split it up into four different sets, right? You guys went on twice so, and No Chase went on twice. How I look at it is, like, for a show like this, like, it's St. Patty's Day. Everyone's there to party. Everyone's there to be entertained, not educated, you know? So, like, as a DJ, I want to, like, get a hold of them to where I have their attention and then show them something they don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I w- the second we'd have their attention, I'm like, all right, let's do a set. And Tanner and I would do three songs. And then towards the last few songs, like, you kind of, you're losing their attention because they don't know the songs. Um, and hopefully we gain a few, you know, a few people that are paying attention, they you know, become fans, and then back to the party, and I, I feel like I have them again. It's like, all right, no, now no chase goes on. And then, we d- yeah, we did that four times. Yeah, that's that's really dope. I feel like that's a huge advantage over, you know, some other producer that's, like, only making music and not really DJing out all the time and not doing shows. Because you guys do a pretty healthy amount of shows even if it's like a, a club show or something at a bar or something like that. And that is a huge advantage because the more you do something, the better you get at it. Yeah. You know, like what's something if you, if it comes to mind, like something that more recently you may have noticed or started doing more because you've been doing shows for this long now. And you're like, we do this because. I mean, we used to amp a mic in a DJ booth and it was just like a feedback nightmare. Yeah. It's just something we haven't really dialed in, you know, because we're basically our own sound guys. So in a club setting, you know, it's different than playing like a show where there's sound guys and techs for the venue. We tried a couple times where we kind of mic and amp, and just put it like under the DJ booth. And I so remember much, when you were doing that. Yeah, yeah there's so awful. much rumble and things yeah. coming back into the mic that it just was a nightmare. And we've kind of figured it out, you know, just for a couple of tricks during a club set that I just have a couple distortion pedals go directly into the mixer and it sounds pretty solid. Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we just go pedal board direct into the mixer. And now we used to have a wired cord to the guitar and now we have like wireless inputs so you can like get up on the bar and shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's no issue. It's super clean, super easy. No sound check needed. Yeah. I um, mean, I got approximately 75 feet on me, but it's pretty yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> But even just that, the the getting them with music, you're DJing, you're doing your thing, you got the crowd, and then you go on. Mm-hmm. Even that, I feel like, is something you've learned just from doing it over time. Like, maybe your first show, you guys probably weren't thinking about that, I don't think. You were probably like, all right, we're going to go on. I hope they like it. Then, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And I would probably play guitar through half of the set, and then we realize it's like, maybe that's too much guitar. Right, you're so tuning it, you're yeah, fine-tuning everything. So that when you see it, you're like, oh, fuck, he's on the guitar again, and he's on top of the bar. Yeah. He's playing it behind his fucking back. You know, mm-hmm. It's more of a, like a show moment when it comes to our club sets. Uh, as far as performances, uh, you know, obviously we go a little more in-depth with originals and planning out the set. Lots of instruments, lots of vocals. Yeah, that's such a huge sell. That's such a huge sell for, like, a nightclub who's looking for an act but isn't trying to pay $40,000 for, you know, I don't know, Mm -hmm. Soldier Boy or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a, like, a novelty. Yeah, I feel like you guys got to be able to sell that in a package, like, like with an EPK kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we fucking DJ nightclubs and understand how it works so well that 
we can do all this shit perfectly. Mm. We first learned that from uh, when Sakai came to Houston from Las Vegas, essentially, and the guy, uh, Sal Wise, he explained to us, like, in Vegas, there's, like, show moments, you know, like, when the headliner goes on and once and twice during a set, there's going to be these moments where everyone has their camera out. And ever since then, we kind of, like, emulated that in our shows. Yeah. That's hard body. <laughs> it's a good time. It it's is fun, body. yeah. And now, like, I mean, for at least for club shows, like, that's, it's just a breeze, you know? It's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, like, it's, it's like a hack. Like, the him playing the guitar, everyone's like, oh, my God. Yeah. Behind that's his like back it. with his teeth and shit? Something, yeah. He hasn't hit, I haven't seen him hit the teeth I haven't yet. done the teeth. I can't really do the teeth. Well, you do your tongue, don't you? I no, can't that do the, the tongue. the Asian guy at the... Oh, that oh, was Rick Lee, shout out Rick bro. Lee. Yeah, shout out Rick Lee. I can do the tongue, but it's just like, I don't know, it's weird. I'm kind of a germaphobe, so I think about <laughs> how many people I've dapped up that night, and I've touched my strings, yeah, and I'm just yeah, licking yeah. everybody's palms. Yeah, I'm just dude. like, maybe not. I'll just pick it behind my back. See, my boy JL, <laughs> that would never even be a thought in he his fucking even, mind. He would yeah. voluntarily he would lick, lick somebody's hand. He would lick everybody's me. palms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He'll lick anything. For the, for the gram. When he... So when we tell him about the ankle, yeah, the day before we did a show, he he was interacting with a friend of ours and he like jumped up on the side of the stage where there were some steps and he just cheese grated the back of his heel so deep. Of course, the first thing he did was whip out his camera and start filming his bleeding (laughs) ankle. Yeah, But next I, I'm kind of packing up and I turn my head and there's just flashlights on him. I was like, what's going on? And I look, and he's just gushing blood all oh, over everybody's hands. It's on my hands. It's on my girlfriend's hands. It's in my shoes that I that are now his. <laughs> you were he was borrowing your shoes. Yeah, um, he's such a crazy. And cat. He's just filming it. Yeah, I knew it. at that exact moment that he was different because yeah. you were DJing when this happened. I was kind of moseying around on stage, yeah. and I saw him sitting there. It was right on, when I switched over, he was sitting on the stairs with his camera, just filming his leg. And I look over, and it's just gushing blood. And I'm yeah. like, "This kid's different." Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> he showed up to Houston with shoes that are a size too small. He's just walking on the <laughs> bent heel. I was like, man, these things are like cheese graters on my feet. I was like, Dude, what the fuck? He's so such a good. And then my girlfriend wrapped him up real good. He's like, oh, I'm good for the show tomorrow. And then he's I as much tell. energy as ever. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's insane. I, I wonder how it's doing. I don't think we rewrapped him. Bro, he was <laughs> at the show. He's, he gets on stage and he's like, what's up, Austin? And the whole oh. crowd just goes, They their whole vibe Houston. changes. They start yelling. Houston. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, Brad Houston. And, and I'm like, not, I'm like, I, not here he us. saw me. I'm like, bro, you said Austin. And he was like, oh, fuck. And he's like, what's up, Houston? And they're like, yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> he looks like he's got frosted tips. He just looks like a normal white dude. But he, he's Spanish. He speaks very good Spanish. My Latinos are Latinos. Manos arriba. Yeah. And the whole fucking place is like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like he's Changed fluent the to vibe. the teeth. And it's amazing. They make a lot of Latin music. It's incredible. How'd you guys meet him? The Bruce, the Bruce music video. video. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And then he, we were shown his music, and it's like off the bat, we like so he's good. a filmmaker, he's an artist. We're like, we gotta have this guy out to Houston, and we just kept bothering him. And he's like, he's driving cross country right now, making like an indie film music project with his friend, and he's he's just like, yeah, stopped by. We made some tracks, and he flew back for the show. And flew back. Now he's on the road again. I could spend the whole podcast talking about this guy's story. <laughs> so maybe when he comes on, he'll yeah, yeah. Have to I, you I, I would sure. definitely want to have him on. Yeah, where he's in Vegas right now, and where where did he come from? If he New York City, he started in New York and was just traveling. He hit Houston on the way, um, and then made it all the way to the West Coast to L.A. And then their car broke down on the way back in Vegas. I think they got in it Death fixed. Valley. Yeah. <laughs> The hottest and coldest place on yeah. the planet. <laughs> so maybe on his way back to New York, uh, he can stop in Chicago. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll remind him about it for sure. For sure. That'd be super lit. That'd be a great episode. I just don't want him to bleed on anything in my career. He might. Just be prepared. There is. Yeah. It wouldn't be the worst thing. Yeah. I have his worse. bloody socks in my backpack. Could be worth it. I think we found one in your studio, actually, too. He borrowed a few pairs of my socks. <laughs> <laughs> he comes there was with his whole in life studio. in his backpack. He just got a dirty no good shirt that he's been wearing the whole trip. <laughs> yeah. And we should have uh, gave him a new shirt. Yeah, we should have. <laughs> yeah, that was sick. Yeah, he's a great hang. Speaking of flying, I flew here on 
Friday morning and I downloaded the latest Joe Rogan podcast, which was James Lindsay. You know who that guy is? Mm -mm. He's like a wild boy, like right wing wild boy on Twitter okay. all day, like argue mm -hmm. he's the guy that answers people in the comments and like battles them all day on yeah. twitter and you could just go watch and it's extremely entertaining mm -hmm. but uh yeah he's a wild boy so i fall asleep on the plane and i wake up to them talking about this conspiracy he's talking literally about how boeing the airplane company oh yeah i know what you're talking about there's a conspiracy that uh they're tanking the company and because China just came out with some new planes that are like the competitors to the Boeing 747 and the other Boeing, and they're all in cahoots to like tank Boeing. And they're, they're, there was a whistleblower that came out and said that the planes are not up to and par. He's suicided. And he got, he's dead now. Yeah. And, and it's, yes, alleged suicide. And like all this shit about how the inspectors are not doing a good job on inspecting the planes they're only giving them two hours to do it in the hopes that these planes will fall apart and the company will go down and i wake up to this in the <laughs> middle of turbulence oh my God. and i'm just baked you know i hit a little eddy before i got on the plane and yeah. i just had to sit there with my eyes closed and just go just breathe just breathe if you're gonna die you're gonna die there's nothing you could do about it yeah just fucking it's probably not gonna happen but if this is a sign and it's happening just let it happen yeah that'd be wild it was That's ridiculous horrific. we were just on some flights too and i saw some things it's like oh american airlines flight emergency lands for engines setting on fire it's like okay what does boeing make every airline ever yeah. Every 747 airline ever. I feel like I have stock in Boeing. Should probably, should <laughs> probably pull it. Yeah. Should probably <laughs> go, whatever that out. Chinese company is, go throw it in that. Yeah, for sure. That's whatever insanity. Nancy Pelosi's doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, so that was pretty, that was pretty intense. So I we're just driving everywhere that. now. <laughs> yeah. I fucking, dude, and that's definitely my last time flying on Southwest because I pull up with my backpack, my over been over the head bin suitcase and i have my pillow not a neck pillow like a legit pillow from my bed from my bed which i've never had a problem flying with. what do you what do you do with the pillow like you Normally? said you said window and yeah sit what, window what if, yeah do you I always get, get window come on dog i'm 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 a i'm a pre-check i'm that a i'm awesome. a pre-board i heard um wow. you have a hack for i don't know if you want to tell everyone about it but yeah to get on the plane early i'm scared no <laughs> I have extreme sciatica. Okay. <laughs> and I need to pre-board. Yeah. Okay. So what do you do? So I tell them that I need to pre-board. Nice. And they no questions. They're not allowed. You're not allowed to ask, like, what is your medical condition? It's nice. like a law, you know? Uh -huh. But if they did ask, I'd tell them I had sciatica, yeah. which is the same way I got the wheelchair when I got off of the <laughs> airplane from Panama yeah. to get through customs. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. I actually recently saw in in the airport. I, I don't know if it was here in Vegas, but I was walking by some girl. Employee was walking by a by a wheelchair, and she's like, "Can I get a ride?" And he's like, <laughs> "What's wrong?" And she goes, "My leg hurt." And I think she got on, and you just, yeah, yeah, they have insane. to. Yeah, there was, I got pushed past all of my boys. <laughs> we all it was a bachelor party in panama we get off the plane all of my boys have global entry because they fucking travel with their wives around the world and shit i don't have fucking global entry so they're all like skipping this long ass line yeah and now I'm, now i'm getting like panicky i'm like i'm not gonna be the last motherfucker left in this airport all yeah. my boys are gone i'm still in line like yeah. i'm not going out like that so i went to the wheelchair guy and i let him know that my sciatica was acting up a little bit and I got pushed past all of my boys. They're all standing in line. They're just laughing. <laughs> and I, just, I was trying so hard not to laugh. I was trying to keep the straightest face. I'm sitting there. My roller bag's like between my legs rolling in front of me. I got my pillow on my bag. And I just get rolled past them. Every single one of them that saw me, they just... I just see them like turn around. It's so funny. <laughs> There was one time where um, Silas wanted to try it out, 
and I I got nervous. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, I don't know where we were going. Might have been on our tour or something. We were flying a lot, and uh, we just forgot to check in. We were like C sixty C fifty nine, wrecked. We were wrecked, <laughs> and so I was like, dude. All of a sudden, my back hurts. I was like, oh. I have a herniated disc. Oh, in my yeah, yeah. So you I used do. my trick, he huh? Did, he yeah, had I it, did, and yeah. then I was like, I feel bad about it. Though. My back feels fine, and he's like, "All right." He gets on, no problem, and he just has to watch me struggle to find a middle seat. He's I'm just yeah, just napping. shitting, grin. <laughs> yeah, I was probably yeah. asleep. Yeah, and I was just like, "Fuck." <laughs> That's one thing I won't do is take those first seats though. It's for the like the old people and the wheelchair people to have like those first seats. You're not allowed to take the uh, extra row seats too if you do I that. I found that out flying really? here. Yeah. Cuz I go to get the exit row and she was like, "Did you just get on pre-board?" And I was like, "Yeah." And she was like, "You can't sit in the exit row." Yeah. And I was like, "You're isn't disabled oh, cuz you're unable to." I know, but I was like, "Isn't that the whole point? I need a seat that has more room." And she was like, "Yeah, you can go sit up front." And I was like, I'm not that big of a piece of shit where I'm going to take some fucking old wheelchair person's seat you just at the wanna, front of the you plane. You want to lean on your pillow. Yeah, I just want a window <laughs> seat. But she, but here's the thing. They made me now put the pillow. I'm trying to get pre-board. And she's like, what? Is, she's like, is that a pillow? Because it's like on my suitcase. <laughs> no. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, can it fit in your bag? And I was like, I just said, yeah, because I'm like. What, what are we doing here? I'm yeah. Like, yeah, it can fit in my bag. I pulled it out bitch. of it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and she was like, all right, you got to put it in your bag. Otherwise, you got to check something. And I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. This is my pillow. And she was like, as of, you know, whatever date, we don't allow pillows and blankets anymore. I'm like, what about a neck pillow? She's like, that's fine. I was like, so I'll put this pillow around my neck. <laughs> yeah. She goes, no, nah, you can't do that. And I was like, why? And she's like, listen, I'm just not trying to get in trouble. My manager's over there. Like, she didn't want to fight. I was like, mm -hmm. I respect. I shoved the pillow in my bag. And that was the plan was to go on the plane, get the exit seat, throw my shit up, pull my pillow out real quick. But I got wrecked when I went to go to get the exit seat. And the flight attendant was, like, looking at me all crazy. Like, oh, you just God. got on the plane with four 90-year-old women. <laughs> and you're trying to get the exit seat. I was like, I can't pull a pillow out of yeah. my bag now. <laughs> pillow, blanket, sleeping mask. Yeah. <laughs> and you get wheeled out like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So my plan going home. Worst. <laughs> my plan going home is to put the pillow inside of my sweatshirt like this. And if anybody Fat says suit. something to me, I'm gonna be like are you fat shaming me? <laughs> I'd be like, sir, is that, that's not, I'll be like, this is my body. Like, You're lucky you can, I'm not buying another seat right now. Yeah, you could touch it if you want. But. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be, that, host, that Houston airport's fucking hot. Yeah, whatever. It's worth whatever it. it Having that pillow is big, dude. Flying with that pillow is game changer because, yeah, you use it if you're sleeping up against a wall, but even not having it on your lap and having like a nice, comfortable elevated thing for your arms is huge that's pretty nice i usually use my hoodie but then i'm cold if i take it off i'm using it as a pillow mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i just can't sleep on planes or putting start bringing a pillow putting the tray table down and putting the pillow on it the long the oh. tall way the long way so you could smash it down oh. and it's still got some good you know that resistance nice. put your head that on there good. the pillow is a game changer and they're fucking assholes for... I mean, I know why they changed the <laughs> you, rules. Wait, you're the asshole. I know. <laughs> no, they're assholes because what is yeah. my pillow doing? Yeah, is yeah, it yeah. getting in anybody else's way? I know exactly why they changed the rules. It's because they're racist assholes is what mm. it is. There was, there's been an influx of African-American people flying on Southwest close. with just shit, just extra shit. Mm. Just like I've seen motherfuckers get on there with floaties. Like pool toys, I swear to God, like blown up, blown up pool toys. <laughs> oh my gosh! And I mean, it's no shock to me that they changed the rules. When she told me that, I was like, I, "Listen, I get it." I but, guess if I didn't have the pillow, it might piss me off because I'm a very like by the rules. I'm pretty by the book guy. Yeah. If I saw something like that, I'd be like, "The fuck do you need a pillow for, dude? <laughs> none of us, none of us have a pillow. Why do you need it?" Not for you because you're my friend, but <laughs> but what is, the, think what, what is the pillow doing? Nothing. It's I'm, on your, I'm on your side. I'm on your side. Are you though? Because you don't <laughs> yeah, seem yeah, like yeah, you yeah, are. Yeah. I'm on your side. 
if I saw some random, I don't know. It's just how I, 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 I like to judge people silently. Look at this yeah. fucker. Yeah. So this pillow. fucker. You need a pillow. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Look at this faggot needs a pillow. Yeah. Bro, I fucking. <laughs> oh my gosh. You need a fucking. My internal too? thinking cursed me one time because I was, I was flying somewhere, and this guy had a full suit in like a dry cleaning bag. I was like, who's this fucking joker, dude? Like, he put it up in the thing. When we got off the flight, I was like, oh, now i got to wait for this fucking guy to get his. He turned towards me. He's like, I had a stroke. Can you help me get this from oh, I was like, oh, that'll put dude, you in I'll your help place you. quick. I was like, I'll help you do anything you need, bro. <laughs> I grabbed, like, his big backpack. I walked out with his shit. <laughs> it was just a, a backfire for ju- judging somebody <laughs> yeah, in my head I feel dude. that i, I felt horrible that. <laughs> so i try not to judge anymore yeah it's because i try my best because of that like it, <laughs> just my luck i'm like look at this fucking out with all this shit yeah get your big ass backpack out of there <laughs> turns to me shaking i'm like oh god dude there was there it was a it was a rowdy scene because it's spring break right now there yeah. i'm even getting notifications like spring break we get there early get there it's early. gonna take a long time this and that blah blah so I'm, you know, I'm on the plane already, obviously, sitting, chilling, chaired in, dude. <laughs> <laughs> trying obviously. to make sure no one gets the middle seat next to me. I got my legs spread as wide as possible. Looking pissed. Have your looking tattoo mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and some fucking girl gets on the plane. She's like, "What's up, Johnson family reunion? Uh, we in this bitch? <laughs> woo woo!" And I was like, "Oh, oh no, no, stop it!" Seven in the morning, bro. Just yes. <sighs> It was ridiculous. Who, um, awful. so if you're in the middle seat, you get both armrests, right? No, that's you get rule. no armrests. If you're in the middle seat, that's why they call it bitch. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Aisle seat gets the extra leg room, one armrest. Middle seat gets both armrests. And then the window gets to lean on the window and they get one armrest. You don't get an armrest though. The armrest is gone on the on the right side. Yeah, but you get to lean. Everyone gets something. That's how I see it. I think if you can't finesse your way out of a middle seat, you suffer in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I see it. That's a good point. I started living by that when he told me that. Like, I'll give up my... If I'm on the aisle, I'll give it up for the person. I do, yeah, I do And too. then when I'm in the middle... Wait, let me think about this. Yeah, if I'm in the middle... Which happened here? I was I was in the middle. I let my I want to sit next to my brother on the way here. I let him take the window. I was in the middle, and the girl next to me is just like this, and I'm flying like this. Just on my little Game Boy. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, this is fucked up, dude. I need both of these. Just mad. Yeah. Y'all seen that video of the guy just taking it over? No. And the guy's like. But he's filming it secretly. That's what I fucking wanted to do, but I don't have Should've. the goal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, dude. Middle gets both armrests. That's a rule. Everyone knows. I've never heard that before. Hmm. I I don't though, know, right? man. When I'm on a plane, it's different. It's di- it's like a you're a different person. I'm a different <laughs> yeah. person. Like I try and be so nice and caring in real life as much as I can. But like plane ride, you it's like a instinctual animal. Like the the real animal comes out of you. Like yeah. I'm like. This is every man for himself. As like, long as you don't run to the front when you land, it's fine. Yeah, I don't care about that. Whatever. It's it just, I, I, I just, I want to get, I just got to get through it in the most comfortable way possible because it's going to suck. There's no yeah. good way of doing it unless you're fucking rich and get first class, which they don't even have on Southwest because we're all poor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pre-board is first class. On That's, That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I'm flying Southwest first class. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But, yeah, I almost made it out with no one in the middle seat. Damn. It was like the, it was like they were shutting the door and this lady, like, got there just in time and it was the only seat left. You want to know the best day to fly the entire year? Christmas. Nope. 9-11. Bingo. You think so? That's the, we've done it, so. The past two years, I feel like we've flown on 9-11 Fucking whole road. Yeah, no one's flying, dude. No one's it's flying, great. dude. I can't remember if I've ever flown on 9-11, but on Christmas I flew one time and it, the plane was completely Christmas, empty. Yeah, Christmas on Christmas Day, too. yeah. Yeah, 9-11 takes the, takes the cake. Though. I could see that. I don't know if I've flown on Christmas. I've flown Christmas Eve and it was the worst day in Southwest history. <laughs> I had to drive the rest of the way from I remember. Yeah, what to was Reno. it? Uh, you, there was uh, two canceled flights. Oh, it was just last like, year, right? Was that just last year? Last year, year yeah. yeah I remember there was that, such a yeah. backup of 
flies that it went back days. And when I was in Reno already, I drove. It was like Christmas Eve. I got there Christmas Day. And uh, when I was leaving Reno, like five days later, I'm still getting texts like, oh, get ready for your flight to Reno. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah like, I I it was here. so fucked. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah the airlines. Everything's oh, well. fucked now, bro. Yeah. You know. Life's good. Life's good when you got a viral TikTok video. That's you right. Got when you're a fucking right. celebrity, it's pretty great. Yeah, <laughs> life's good when you're just crushing it. Yeah. <laughs> can't complain. I'm fucking can't even get more than 20 minutes of a pod recorded over here. <laughs> uh, we got the audio, though. Yeah. Nah, it'll be good. good it'll be now. good. Actually, I'm kind of, I'm a little bit re- relieved because now I have an excuse to not make clips. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. less work. <laughs> yeah. Less work for me. But you got to find something, right? You think there's something in the first 20 minutes? Yeah, there's, yeah there's, I could make something happen for yeah. sure. Maybe you yeah. can take a funny audio clip and like kind of make your guys' mouth move like a ventriloquist <laughs> dummy. I could do you that. A like a South Park it. character. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd yeah. be funny. That'd be good. I got to piss again real quick. I've been drinking that All right. water. Hold All right. Do you want us to talk or are you going to edit it out? Should we talk to Diamond Cuts? Should we have elevator music? Did you bring you bring a light? There's no light in the bathroom. There's no light. You're going to piss in the dark. I mean, don't piss on the seat. Don't piss on the floor. <laughs> God, that's how you know he's he's old, dude. I can hear him pissing deep. Yeah. Old men just piss different. They grow, they grow and they go, oh. You ever in a public bathroom pissing next to an old guy? Yeah, I'm jealous. Yeah, it sounds like they're. It must feel really good when they groan. Yeah, they're always like. Oh. I've heard some old men say it's better it's better than an orgasm. Old man piss. Yeah, it sounds like an orgasm. It sounds pretty nice. Yeah. Oh, hand on the wall, <laughs> shaking your head, dude. I'm in and out, dude. I have a shy bladder. I am in and out too. I fucking push that shit out. Yeah, I have to put. If there's like a like at a baseball stadium, if there's a line of urinals with no walls, I really got to focus because I have a shy bladder. <laughs> Are you pee shy? A little bit. I don't know why. Like growing up, like with my, I could piss back to back with a friend, but when Swords. in public and everybody's just fucking drunk pissing like a like a horse, just oh, I'm like, <clears throat> just fucking try. I'll piss. Like it's not like I can't, but it takes me a second. You gotta really muster it up. Yeah, I think about it too much. One of my boys cured my other boy's pee shyness yeah. one night. He was like, everyone went to go take a piss in the alley or something. And my one boy was like, I can't, bro. Like, I'm pee shy. I can't pee. Like, outside, you guys are here. And my boy was like, nah, this ends today. Like, we're going to fix this. And he literally, he he is like, pull your dick out. Like, get ready to piss. And he knelt down like a, like a baseball coach. <laughs> like, this far from his dick. And yeah. he was just like, you're going to pee. Like, let it out. Let's yeah. go. Let's fucking go. You oh like forced God. him to pee, cured him. <laughs> Are you never, baptized never been by pee fire. shy since? Well, Are you gonna do this to me? <laughs> I, w- I, w- I would one hundred percent help you if you needed okay. help. I may mean to slap it left to right for a little bit, but I'll you, fucking you let I'll me know. There. <laughs> I if, got you. What if I can't then? What if it makes it worse? <laughs> You just th- oh. think of him every time you're peeing. Now I just need to go in the fucking stall. <laughs> I just think of Zach staring at my dick every time I pee. Yeah. I guess that's not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> Could be worse. Yeah. I don't know if Yadi will appreciate me staring at your dick that closely, but. I mean, what's she going to do? <laughs> Sorry, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah. 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 Can we talk about as some as some real kill tony fans how upsetting it is that tony has changed the format of the show and started putting ads throughout the entire episode i wanted to talk to you about this i i support him that's fucked up bro. what do you mean what pod how many podcasts do you listen to they all have ads in the middle right and that's why i respected the fuck out of kill tony and tony hinchcliffe for putting them front loading them all, letting you skip them all, and then yeah. just breeze through and enjoy the entire show. Because a pod is different than a live show. But it is the number one live podcast in the world. It is, but a podcast, like there is some performance to it. There is some like magic being created in the conversation of just 
free flowing, whatever. But like that's a live comedy show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They would never interrupt that with an ad at the show itself. Yeah, but at least like, you know, when a comic's done, like there's like a you know, the the storyline stops. I I I think he he you know he gets his money. I'm I support him. I support him getting his money, but if it's the different, it's not like he's not gonna get his money. Do you think he gets paid more by putting him in the middle? I think he does. I think that's the only reason he would do it. Yeah, it's got to be tiered. Yeah, right. But and that's what I'm saying. Like, let's say you know he gets a normal episode hits a million views and he gets a hundred thousand dollars in ads for that. Yeah, I don't know what the number is, but let's say it's. I would love to know. Let's say it's a hundred grand if he front loads all the ads and did it like he used to, and then let's say it's a hundred and twenty five grand if he does it throughout the episode in the middle. I think he's a piece of shit for taking the twenty five extra. The hundred's good enough. Twenty five thousand dollars. You wouldn't a lot of money. take it. I wouldn't ruin the integrity of what I built and how I got the people there in the first place. To me, it's just like quick, you know. Couple clicks, no, we're on in the bullshit. next comic. I want to be able to, <laughs> I want to be able to skip those ads, put the remote down, it's and on. not have to fucking worry about it. I don't want to have to fucking find the remote. I don't want to have to fucking try and scroll perfectly. Oh, I went a little too would far. You, would Let you pay? Fucking... Would you pay for it with no ads? Potentially, but the 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 hardest thing is that I have been there. I don't want to say since the beginning because I didn't start watching. Till 2000, 2020, really, when he started in what, probably like twenty fifteen or some shit. Mm. Uh, they just said eleven. Yeah, years. I've been I've been listening since twenty seventeen. A little longer than me, so you know, like you, it was it was built on this way of doing it. Yeah, and that's how I've come to enjoy it and love it and have respect for him. And now he's changing. I don't like change. I have a, I have a, I have a hard time with change. You didn't like it when they moved to the mothership at first either. That's true, because it felt weird. It did, but, but they now did, it's but great. they worked the kinks out as well. Yeah, yeah so that's they, true. They did change a lot of shit since that first episode at the. Mothership. I didn't like it when it came to Austin at first, from L.A. Yeah, see, I I really only started. I watched a bunch of old L.A. ones. Once I found it, but yeah. then like I really started tuning in every week when they were at Antones. Yeah, when they got rid of the old band, I was like, it's never going to be the same again. But it now I, I like better. it better now. Yeah. It got way. It better. took me a while to get used to. It, you just have better. a deeper respect for the production that goes into it because I it's never bothered me. I see some similarities between where you like to sit on a plane and having ads in the middle. Of the <laughs> <Tony show>. <laughs> <laughs> You just like things your way. That's not the wrong. I thing. like things my. It's my <laughs> way, but it's also just the way that I have enjoyed. It. It. It's that's his true. way. It's true. not necessarily my way. It's just that's, it's that's true, yeah. it's his way that he did it in the first place. And I personally think that he did it that way for a reason. Yeah. And now he changed it for the money. I don't like that. I think if they did a, uh, you don't like, like a, change, but he did change. I think if they did a <laughs> Patreon. Like five dollars a month, I would pay for it for no ads. Yeah, for sure. I and I and I'm a full. I'm a big supporter. I'm a big fan of supporting people through Patreon. Yeah, mm. but he would. But it would have to be. I guess no ads would be cool. I'd want like the jam at the beginning, maybe the if they jam. had the jam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then in. they could put any music on there. Yeah, that'd be sick. We were thinking about starting a Patreon. I've been telling you guys this forever. I think you should for sure. Yeah, just put in like our our whips and our unreleased stuff on there just so like our fans can like see the process and listen to all our shit we don't put out. Bro, if you put all on your like private SoundCloud page like we all that things, shit, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. All that shit if you just put that on the Patreon and gave people a little bit of whatever it is. It doesn't even have to be like a th- specific thing just yeah. whatever the fuck it is like we love these guys i want to see what you're creating i mean i'm a fan of you guys i want to see the art that you did i want to see the fucking studio that you're building i want to see the next thing that you're scanning for the next album cover or single release or whatever like all of that shit is things that you're thinking of and creating and it's inspiring to me and I think anybody else who's a fan of you, and that's the biggest thing of Patreon, I think, is it's a platform 
where there are no boundaries whatsoever and it's yeah. just pure support from people that want to see whatever the fuck you have in your head. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think we'll probably do it this week, honestly. I think it'd be sick. Yeah. Yeah, I wish we would have done it before the fucking TikTok. <laughs> yeah. I brought exactly. it up like the week before too. Yeah. Anyways. Just whatever beat you made a beat today. Uh, we didn't put anything on Patreon yesterday. Let's fucking throw this up here. Yeah. yeah. That's it. It's easy. We have enough low stakes. We have I'm a big low stakes guy. Beats on our SoundCloud to put one out every day for the next year, probably. Yeah. 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 It'd be incredible. Also, have you been watching Rogan on YouTube at yes. all? Now that he's back? Yeah, that's the only place I watch it. I. I think I know you're about to say. Speaking of Rogan, I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on here. I think Uh, that they had a way bigger play in mind, Spotify. Yeah. When they did that. Because I watched the whole Mexican OT episode on YouTube. And there was all these times that would come up when Rogan's like, oh, bro, you never heard of uh, this band, whatever, this song. He's like, I'm going to play it for you. And then he's like, oh, fuck, we can't. We're on. We're back on YouTube. We can't do it. He's like, you know what? Fuck it. We'll just cut it out of the YouTube thing, but we'll leave it in the in the Spotify version. Yeah. And that's gonna make either YouTube change whatever the fuck is preventing that from happening, or it's just gonna draw more people to Spotify. Mm. I is think this after he went back to YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I think that's just a happy accident for Spotify. You think so? Yeah. Because once he was able to do that. On Spotify, that's like kind of his thing now. That was like he a, loves, that was yeah, a huge that. advantage for him, being able to play music on the podcast. Yeah, um, I feel like Spotify. I feel like they had to have they had to have been like, yo, make sure you play play music on there. Yeah, you know, uh, I feel like Joe just happens. does whatever he wants, and then sp- that happens. Spotify is like, yes, yeah, yeah, it could be. But every time it was happening on the, that episode, I was like, damn. Did you go this to is, Spotify? I didn't, but I was like a lot of people you wanted would. to. Yeah. I wanted to. Yeah. I was in the middle of like rolling out and shit. I wasn't about to get up, but I, I, mm-hmm. I see the vision. I think more so than it bringing people to Spotify, it's gonna make YouTube change their rules. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you? Yeah. Is that what you thought I was gonna say? Yeah, I remember you posted something about that. Yeah. I, I, I just watch it on YouTube. I missed the comments, and I hate on Spotify. Like I'll accidentally hit next, and then I'm just it's just uh-huh. done. You know. And there's no ads on the YouTube version. Oh, yeah. Which is weird. Even if you don't have premium? Probably. Well, there's YouTube ads on the, yeah, if you don't have premium. But there's no, like, Joe Rogan podcast ads. Those are easy to skip, but yeah. Yeah. They're easy to skip on Spotify. Yeah, on Spotify. For sure. That's what I'm saying, because it's just a whole other shit. Yeah. That's kind of the shit. Yeah. That's funny, though. That's great for Spotify. Yeah, dude. Shout, I mean, we we're just showing you the analytics that Spotify gives us for our songs goes way harder than Apple Music or SoundCloud. Yeah, I was actually extremely impressed and intrigued by that. Yeah, mm-hmm. like we could see how many people are listening in this moment, and it you know breaks it down to what playlist the song's getting played off of, and it's great. Shout out Denver, number yeah, one Denver's city. our number one city right now. Fuck yeah, with all the bass heads out there. Hell yeah, you guys are gonna have to go. I wonder if I know anyone in Denver. Do you guys know anyone in Denver? No. Mm-mm. <clears throat> I'm sure I do. Oh, yeah. I wonder how many listeners we need from Denver to convince someone to book us for a show. Well, I know, actually, I do know someone in Denver. Riot House uh, opened up in Denver recently, and my boy Master Monk is out there. He's like the entertainment director. They do bass shows, or is it a club? It's a club. Mm. Yeah. But I'm sure... Just a club that's, that's booking, pull. people yeah, would yeah. come out. If we yeah. show them that, it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it'd be sick. Yeah, I think we have like a thousand people in Denver slapping us. It'd be sick. Slapping I'll link you guys face. for sure. Sick. That'd be dope. Yeah. I want to go to Denver, too. I've only been to Greeley, Colorado. Let's go skiing. I'm a snowboard guy, man. Dude, don't fucking say no. that. Get out of here, dude. I don't really respect skiers, if we're going to be honest. Why? <laughs> it's just like, it's like rollerblading <laughs> in the snow, dude. What do you mean? Skiing's been a, a skiing's been around way longer. I'm gonna sit back for this portion. <laughs> Bro, I'll podcast. get fired up about <laughs> this. Dude. Snowboarders don't even belong on the mountain. Dude. Snowboarding's for tourists. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
We need cuts here. Yo, I just we, said we, we got a lot of fans in Denver, bro. Out. Be careful. Dude, they shouldn't be allowed on the mountain. They didn't oh used to be God. allowed on the mountain. You just lost all your fans. Oh my God. <laughs> New single. Is apologies coming out. skiing so badly. <laughs> only, our fans only ski, dude. <laughs> You won't have a single snowboarding fan. You I know. We, I, I, take I respect some snowboarders, but the, you know, most new people that go to snow sports, they snowboard and they just sit on their ass all day and they yeah. just block the mountain. Yeah. But <laughs> for a while, there wasn't snowboarders allowed on the mountain. Like back, like back when, like in the blacks had to use the, their own water fountain. It's similar. <laughs> <laughs> like in the eighties, like eighties, nineties, yeah. snowboarders weren't allowed on mountains because of such a purist skiing mentality. Pretty much. I mean, it's like uh, I think it was just like regulation. Like shit's still coming out. Like snowboard scooters are coming out, and those things aren't allowed on the mountain. It was, it was the same thing. Was no there was only like this thing. It's like, what the fuck is this? This isn't. You're gonna get hurt on this. It's like a liability. But there's mm. funny ass videos of skiers, and they sound so racist. They're like, they're a disgrace to the. De- to the community, we don't want them here. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's Jesus old Christ. videos uh, in like the '80s, and they're like these fucking guys come and they're speeding down the mountain, zigzagging, and they're, they're ruining dangerous. the sport. Yeah, <laughs> and then these guys would just walk up the side of the mountain and come down. Patrol would be after them. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's pretty funny. So when did they let snowboarders onto the mountain? Started probably like in the '90s. Who, was it Sean White? Did he change the game for you guys? Or nah, I mean, I think that once it got introduced to the Olympics for sure, but. That was a little bit before him. But there was a time where when snowboarding first got introduced, they weren't allowed. There's probably still some mountains where it's only skiers, yeah. which is the better mountain. Like how, like, like uh, some country clubs are so pure to their racist roots. Like, there's the famous story of Michael Jordan not being able to join Bryn Mawr Country Club and or play golf at Bryn Mawr or something. Yeah. This Chicago. does sound kind of racist. He's like, there are some that don't allow That's why I think it's, it's a better it, mountain. Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> we all have to show you the video. It's fucking hilarious. Like, there, it's literally, it feels like an old racist person, yeah. you know, but they're just talking about someone that uses a different piece of equipment. Yeah. That's funny. Haters, man. But yeah, don't snowboard, dude. <laughs> I've never done either. If any of our fans snowboard... We still love you. He's trying to salvage it. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, you look. You I'm look. Trying to salvage you look it. more like a sledder to me. For sure. <laughs> I'm a. I'm a big saucer guy. Yeah, saucers are sketchy, man. I love a like good a saucer. Bit, a good sled, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. why That was so funny. You kind of like do look like a snowboarder, though. At the same time, you get big snow. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'd be much more comfortable on a board than I would with two skis. Yeah, you're. You'd be a gaper for sure. Just wear a helmet. A gaper. A yeah. gaper right when your feet come apart. No, it's it just comes from uh, <laughs> people like they'll have their goggles and then there'll be like a fat gap and then their helmet and they just look like they they don't know what they're doing. What what covers the fat gap? Well, it should just be your helmet on correctly. Oh, it's you just know? like loose. Yeah, they just look like you, you know. You ski with a helmet every time you ski. Hundred percent. Really? Yeah, people. If you don't wear a helmet, you you look like you don't know what you're doing. Really? Do and snowboarders mostly wear a helmet? Does everyone, everyone should everyone should wear a helmet? I we had I was on the ski team in high school. We had a ski team at our high school, and a kid died one year because it was icy. He took his skis off and was trying to walk down the mountain. He got hot, took his helmet off, slid, hit his head on a tree, dead. With the skis off, yeah. Even with the skis, he was walking. He was supposed was, to have his helmet. It was on. it was yeah yeah because you're I mean it's steep. You know, I really don't know anything. About well, yeah, this. Uh, to everyone, wear a helmet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, one hundred percent. I've wear only helmet. gone on a sled down a mountain that's a little bit taller than this stack of books. That's fine. A hill. <laughs> uh, yeah. Even like smacking your head on like compact snow, it's like concrete. You know. Yeah. I, I Silas, don't burn me, but I, I snowboarded a couple times, <laughs> and I. Um, I caught an edge real bad. So it happened in a blink of an eye. I caught an edge super hard uh, on some pretty hard snow, and my wrist like snapped in half. I got a real bad wrist break. I was in a cast for like a year, but I hit my head so hard that I saw like black for a second. If I didn't have a helmet on, I probably would have gotten like a brain injury. Damn. Like I, I knocked myself silly. And that was just on snow. It was on snow, yeah. And I was not going fast at all. Like I was trying some kind of, Dumb stuff earlier in the day, but it was just such a freak accident. And I fucking, dong, like my head bounced up. Snowboarding. I didn't even notice I fucking (laughs) broke my wrist. (laughs) It was because I was snowboarding. Yeah, Yeah. you should definitely wear a helmet, for sure. 
For Damn, sure. I but didn't I, think that that was a helmet sport. Oh yeah. I mean, it makes sense now that I'm thinking about it. But mm. when I everyone like from Houston that goes to the mountain, first of all, they all snowboard, and He's they pissed. and they don't wear helmets. And I'll, I'll I'm like, just put on a helmet at least. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. It's wise words. And like when I when I travel places, I hate looking like a tourist. You know, like when you stick out, mm-hmm. I, I I hate that. So if you don't want to look like a tourist on the mountain, just wear a helmet and ski and wear it tight. Yeah. Don't Bro, be a, don't be a gaper. Well, it, when I was a kid well. and I would like skate, if you're like a little punk skater kid back in the day, if you wear a helmet, you're fucking you're lame, dude. Yeah, if you wear 100%. a helmet, you fucking pussy. My dad still wants me to wear a helmet when I ride my bike in the city. <laughs> bro, now like, I feel like I need a helmet walking, bro. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm scared of injuries now. But as a kid, I was like, ah, like jumping off of my friend's rooftop on a little ramp. Yeah. No helmet. No nothing. No health insurance. No health insurance. I mean, I I had health insurance then, but not now. It is fucked up to think about, like, getting older and shit, and you're like, do I want to play basketball? I love playing basketball, and it's a great workout, but I'm like, what if I, like, fuck my shit up? Yeah. I just, I sprained my ankle playing basketball. I I couldn't walk for, like, two months. Bro, I fuck my back up sleeping. I can't bend. (laughs) I can't bend. I'll wake up. I have a real bad, like, pinched nerve. I can't bend down for the next week. You got to roll out. I need something. He sleeps like a... Maniac. I sleep like a maniac, like, but I wake up. It's been real bad lately. I think something's getting pressed in my back. I need to figure it out. I need to hit a Cairo. Because, like, sometimes I'll wake up and it's like a muscle, but it's been like a month. I wake up Is every it on morning. your right side? It's like, it's like in my bones, like on my hip. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, uh, I feel it kind of like in my leg. If I bend a certain way, it goes up like my back. Mm-hmm. And it's like. I have the same thing. I got to go to the Cairo. Yeah, I, try, I tried every stretch. I try laying on the ground. Hear that? It's extreme what? sciatica, and you can get a pre-board for that. Perfect. Yes. I have an excuse now. You have sciatica. Yeah. Diagnosed. I got I didn't send you guys the picture of me in the wheelchair. We no. put it. I think I, I, I saw it. I talked about it on the pod with Nick, and Diamond Cup put it up on the on the screen. <laughs> I think that was where I saw it. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. It's a good excuse, though. Oh, this is great. I really, really want to clip the Kill Tony moment that we just talked about and see if we can get some traction in the Kill Tony community. I, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I should have backed you up. No, no, it's it's good. <laughs> the the that's the what opposing, you yeah you want yeah. Yeah, yeah you want both sides. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, KT, I'm excited to watch tonight, bro. Yeah, we should oh, yeah. smoke this blunt. Should I light H&B. it right now as we finish up? I don't know. What are we Do you at? want it? I mean, it's, I'm probably near an hour or something. I think we're, I feel like we should wrap this, smoke this blunt, hit H-E-B, get some snacks, get mm. ready for KT. <sighs> yeah. Have a good night. I usually watch, we don't really watch it, Kill Tony together. I watch it with my girl. That's what he was saying. Yeah. yeah. He, like, I mean, Laura and I watch it on the couch and him and Yachty just hide in their cave. Yeah. Where do you, know, do you, are you, is he upstairs a lot? Yeah, I'm upstairs I'm a lot. Downstairs by myself. He's yeah. caved up. Oh, don't say like that. What are you that. doing up there, bro? You trying to it's make just, a baby? It's just, oh, no, it's just my, just my. I bought space. it. I bought us a new TV. I bought us a new couch. No one watches it or sits on it. PS5 down there. PS5's down there. But I have my PS4 with all my <laughs> games upstairs. It's just I don't know. It just became a habit lately. Usually, like my girl and I will watch episode of The Office, and then I usually just. For a while, I, I usually just listen to Kill Tony on my own time. Mm. I don't know why. I'm surprised we're not tired of each other yet. Yeah. People ask us that all the time. You guys do have a huge that. crib. I mean, when I was having to go into your room to, like, shower and brush my teeth and shit, I, I was, like, having time. to take a second of breath after all those stairs. But I think, <laughs> I mean, I think that's, like, I I don't know. I think that's why, like, we have our own spaces, you know. I definitely, like, I mean, I grew up in a pretty small house sharing a bunk bed with my brother, so... It's not the worst thing, but the older <laughs> I get, the more, like, alone time I like, you know, I like to hide. <coughs> I don't yeah, know if we've that. talked about this on here, but mm-hmm. when the studio was at my aunt's house, his mom's house, he would, like, sleep on a beanbag just so we had room for all the studio equipment. Yeah, I didn't have a bed or a closet. The, the closet was, was the, booth, the booth, and the bed was a studio desk. Yeah. And I slept on, like, a beanbag. Maybe that's where my back problems that's came that, from. So there'd just be, be, like, the origin story. five yeah. of us in the studio, and then we'd all leave, and Tanner would just, like, sleep on a beanbag. Yeah. All night from <laughs> fucking... I, I, I had a day job. I'd get off at five up until, like, midnight. We would just be five dudes in my mom's house in my room smoking out in our 
hoarder garage full of shit, and then I would just sleep, and we do it all. We did that for like three, four years straight. Yeah, I didn't have a bed for a long time, and uh, those were the good old. Those were the good old days. Good old days. <laughs> it's all paying off now. Yeah. <laughs> now we're TikTok famous. Yeah. Our uh, our boy Elvis is moving out here. It's mm-hmm. gonna be tight. When's that? <laughs> uh, he said starts with an M. May. Yeah, maybe I think May. What and what's his uh? What's up with his project? He's not putting that out. Uh, I think we're gonna wait till he gets here and like shoot a bunch of content for it. I'm excited to like produce, like you know, as far as like video and just how his brand is gonna look. Yeah, because he has like an album ready, and we have all this experience of how to make content and shit. Yeah. So we've done trial and error so many times. So like for him, it's gonna be like he's gonna be like an industry plant. Hopefully, yeah. It's gonna look because it, it's gonna be his first video is gonna be sweet. You know, yeah. that is true. That's kind of that's kind of how you do it, huh? You, was, you guys went through it already. You know what to do. You yeah. got a fucking vision. You got a plan. He was one of the guys it. we were making music with every day in, in that my mom's room. House. Yeah, yeah. And like whether or not we we're working on his shit, our shit, he was there every day. A lot of the times, it was just like a kind of like a safe space for all of us to just chill, hang out, smoke, yeah, mm-hmm. make beats. You know, it was good. Shout yeah. out, mom. Shout out, ten ninety. I mean, it feels incredible to be at this studio hanging out, and I know that this is obviously bigger and more upgraded and shit, but the vibe is, I'm sure, the same, you know? Practically, oh, yeah. 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 You know? Yeah, it's yeah. the same. It feels feels the same. Yeah, people are like, do you guys, you guys fight ever? It's like, not really. No? Nah. I feel like we not got, yet. like, my brother and I fought nonstop from, like, elementary to high school. You guys were it, fighting in the car, actually, when we were driving. Oh, home. yeah, we had a slap fight. It got pretty intense. That's funny. But, uh... <laughs> But no, I feel like maybe if Silas and I grew up in the same house together, we definitely would have. And I feel like, you know, if we grew up like that, we'd kind of know how to pick at each other's nerves. But we kind of moved in as adults and we just I don't res- know, I, respect each other's space. I've had other roommates as an adult and I fucking hated their guts. Really? Yeah. I guess I've only ever roomed with either an ex-girlfriend or a family member. So I don't really, I've never had a rant. But see, like, people are like, oh, man, like. How long have you been living with them? I was like, well, it's a family member. If it was just if it was just some guy, I'd be like, all right, maybe it's time for me to like get my own spot, you know? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't help that it's family. Yeah, for sure. yeah. I mean, I mean, eventually, if we, you know, when we get older, maybe have kids, get married, duh. But like as of right now, we're just we're chilling. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, Pretty we nice. do the dishes and shit. Yeah, yeah it's tight. Now you guys got a nice little, uh, nice little family pad. I like it. Mm-hmm. You guys got the fucking. The home base. Yeah. Got the ladies there. The Huskies. It's nice. It's one of the biggest, like, one of, like, a huge inspiration for me to stop being a piece of shit and try and find love and make it work mm-hmm. and realize that uh, that's something I want is when we celebrated your birthday at your crib, actually. Really? Yeah. And Yadi, like, threw you a nice party. She got uh, you the yeah. pinata. Mm-hmm. Just did, like, nice, subtle things. I was like, I fucking, I need yeah. that. That's I think tight. she made That's that, cool. too. She made that pinata yeah. her, her mom. Her mom, yeah. yeah. Some Mexican she, shit. Yeah, she, like, I, <laughs> yeah, she's great. Shout out my girlfriend. <laughs> Honestly, like, there's. That's a clip. There's nothing, really, that's ever happened to her. Be like, oh, I can't with this girl anymore. She fucking takes care of me, like, without me asking. Yeah. And I'm usually the one, like, you know, I. I feel like the only thing I do for her is like make her dinner. She's not a big cooker. That's a that's not that's nothing to frown at. Yeah, it's which tall I task. enjoy. I like cooking. I like cooking for her. She does everything. Fucking some nothing, but yeah, her family's great. They're I think in the black community they call that a down ass bitch. That's basically what she is. Yeah, yeah. writer. Yeah, writer. Yeah, for sure. And she's. I mean, she's been there before. We've been famous on TikTok, so <laughs> she really keeps me grounded. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's how's it feel, down. babe? I know. I have to. I have to remind her. Like, <laughs> you, you know, who you're hanging out. With you guys are going to cross a million soon. <laughs> have you ever had something hit a mill? Uh, the video for this room, the book room video, yeah. But was that you and Frugal, right? That posted it. Uh, I think it was just Frugal, but I, don't know, I still it's like our we were thing. in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's about it. I think I'm in the video. Are you? Um. What else? 
It's to have, yeah, to, hit, had the a, little, to hit the mill club. You got to pop a little champagne or something. You guys got to fucking, you got to celebrate. Yeah, we're not very good at celebrating, but maybe we should, yeah. we should do that. The first video I had that hit a million was in the middle of winter, and I went to Georgie and Kevin's crib, who had the penthouse at a high rise, mm-hmm. and I bought a bunch of cheap, shitty champagne and just fucking sprayed it all over myself on their balcony. I saw that. On, <laughs> I saw that way back on your yeah. TikTok or Instagram. I was like, I've never seen this that. This guy fucking looks great. awesome. What did, go, what did it hit a million on? Um, oh, that's was, the one that hit a million? No, no. That was oh, the that day. Was that was the night okay. that a video of mine hit a million. And I was like, we got to fucking celebrate. We got to do something. And Georgie was like, yeah, come through. And then we just fucking sprayed champagne all over my fat, naked body that's in the middle sick. of the cold. What was the video? It was on Facebook. And I believe that it was a video of a, a girl's butt cheeks. And there was a big, like, I poured glitter all over it, right? There was, like, a big glob of glitter, and I smacked her one butt cheek that didn't have any glitter on it, and it made all the other glitter fly up. I saw that, too. And there was glue written, send nudes, so all the glitter flew up, and then the send nudes was on her butt cheek and glitter. Genius. Genius. (laughs) Long-time fan of Party With Strategy. Even before I knew, I followed you. Who thinks of this stuff? And I was like, dude, this guy's genius. He (laughs) he had a box of Kraft macaroni and cheese, took out the noodles, and just poured the cheese all over her ass. She just took her pants off in the club. I think she brought that. Did she? I think she brought that mac and cheese because I was doing a lot of weird, like, food and butt cheek videos. Nice. What a lane. I enjoyed it. It was a good good, good time. Not mad at it. (laughs) <laughs> so that video <laughs> and then you were so down to earth and i was like this is the guy <laughs> that video it. hits a million and you're like we're fucking celebrating <laughs> it's like, yo yeah i was like we gotta fucking celebrate this is crazy <laughs> we made it yeah basically yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the, incredible the mill club that's big that's big if this is before tiktok so it seemed bigger it's not any less big we, on TikTok, but like it makes it feel that way because it happens more often now, right? Like there's a lot of people, their shit goes super viral. It's like, oh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, but it's still that's a that's you got to celebrate that. That's big. Yeah, that's we're. Awesome. I mean, the celebration for me is just more people are listening. You know? Yeah, and yeah. it paid off way harder than mine. <laughs> Nothing really came <laughs> yeah, to yeah, mind. Yeah, no well, one I mean, fucking like, transferred over to my Spotify to see what else I was doing. <laughs> like your shit is like they really just doing to see something more nice. of those videos. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you didn't. Yeah, and you couldn't monetize it at the time. <laughs> they're definitely like they're like, oh, who the fuck's this guy? This is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was cool. That's how but I you're, felt. But you're you're reaping like real benefits. Yeah, it's really dope. It's yeah. good. It's yeah, good. it feels the validation just feels great. We were Sick. all day. It was refreshing. Like, it's fuck wild. Yeah, that that day it was just nonstop. We text each other, bro. Hundred K. Sick. And we made a bet on go. how far it would stop. I bet half a million, and it surpassed it. So I was gonna take the under. Yeah. So yeah, it did pretty good. Sorry, I'm I'm still stuck in Vegas in my head. Yeah. Let's go fucking. Let's have a little pre celebration. Let's go to H E B. Get some we'll get a couple meals. of Andres. Yeah. Andres? What? Andre? A little champagne. You never seen oh, Andres champagne? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The brute? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you just pronounced Andres. Andres. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like a cheese <laughs> board or something? <laughs> <laughs> if you just started calling Andres Andres from now on. Yeah. I, that comedy is so funny to me. Just mispronouncing things on purpose. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Fucking, oh, DJ Nova. Shout out Nova. But <laughs> I didn't say this to him. Hopefully he watches this. He's lived in Nevada for 10 years. Stop. And he was pronouncing it Nevada the whole time. Really? And I, I was too high to say anything, oh I my think. Oh, God. But I was like, what the fuck? It's Nevada? It's Nevada, Nevada yeah. yeah. And how do you know this as a fact? Because I'm from there. Yeah, you're from there. But and who, who else would they would teach know? you this in school? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just Nevada. Like, they're like, you're going to leave Nevada. here one day, and some people are going to say Nevada. N- Nevada. But nope. just know that it's Nevada. Nevada. Nope, no. Other way around. No. Nevada. Okay. It's Nevada. But it's everybody Nevada. says Nevada. Yeah. Some it's like Nevada. a some sort of politician pronounced it wrong yeah. and he got booed. Like it's a yeah. thing. Really? Yeah. yeah. Just growing Nevada. up, you hear somebody say it like that, they're like, 
my mom would be like, it's not how you fucking say it. And yeah. she hates Nevada. For some reason, we, yeah, being from there, you hate it. Yeah, like, I can't. Taught to hate it. I can't. Now that we've said it so many times, I can't think of how I would say it. All right. Three, two, one. Las Vegas, Nevada. That was good. Whoa. Good job. See, because I think, because all of that desert kind of Midwest Arizona, that was all Mexican territory before the westward migration. Yeah. Mex- or I think for a while it was Mexican because obviously it was Native American, but um, but they pronounced it Nevada just with a, mm. there's no awe in there, you know? Mm. Yeah. Say it again. Nevada. 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 Not Nevada. Nevada yeah. is wrong, yeah. In the comments, everybody from Nevada say how it is. Someone on the comment of the Bruce video, they're like, Reno Tahoe would love you guys. And you're like, Really? Yeah, someone said that. Bro, we're fucking oh, what else were the other funny <laughs> comments? They kept calling him Professor Snape. <laughs> yeah. Because oh, it was like covering yeah. his face. Like that. Yeah. Uh, they call me Mac from Always Sunny, which is great. You'll take that. Yeah, with the slick back hair. Swole Mac, though. Yeah, for sure. Not, Not fat, fat Mac. Mac. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but someone in the same comment was like, shout out Snape and Mac. Like that's so specific. Nice. So one of these days, I'm gonna have Ableton open. We gotta take like a screen recording. I'll just with a wand, be oh, dressed yeah. as Snape. Yes, dude. It's like Snape makes fucking house music. Like, Yo, what are we yeah. doing? Let's do that right now. Yeah, that'd be I'll great. Die bla- I'll die a black for a video for sure. Yeah, I'll die a black for a video for sure. Damn, that's yeah. gonna go hard. Yeah. That's funny. Maybe I should do that soon. Harry Potter. <laughs> you gotta make the lighting all Harry Potter and shit. Just yeah. make it dark. It'll just be like cauldron light, and I'm just like, <laughs> for Sick. for our, dry ice. our next video, <laughs> we're gonna get a spotlight and just go outside and just, you know, re- like record from the back of the truck of a spotlight just going across things. And Tanner will be in the light performing, and then maybe fall behind it and like keep like running into it. You know, it's pretty sick. That sounds amazing. How do you do that? Uh, we just need like a nice flashlight. We're gonna have Travis or. Or fisherman. Your I flash- feel like he's got a flashlight for sure. Spotlight correspondent. Yeah, so he's just gonna, AKA Trout. He'll probably hold real. the light, and then we just need a camera in the back of the truck, and then someone to drive the truck. And I just like follow the light, like kind of in and out artistically. That's gonna go hard. Saying, yeah. yeah, it's super easy to shoot. That sounds dope. And then we could do like multiple songs just to that same style, you know? Just put different clothes on them or something. Mm-hmm. And TikToks. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, now you guys have like a like a strategy to shoot content with keeping in mind that you can chop it up and use it for multiple different songs and like yeah, streamline the process. That's what, definitely what we do now. Instead of like we would just shoot one video for the new song, even if it was just like for content, not even a music video. And now it's like, all right, let's find a scene and let's shoot everything we've ever made from this area. It's going to take all day. Smart. But now we have. But I mean, we're still pieces. posting shit. And we filmed it like a month or two ago, like two from months that, ago. From the video, the bruise video, the yeah. couch video. That's Shot, good. Like, that's, every song. that's valuable game yeah. right yeah. there. Yeah. Took that's free up on game. Content. It took yeah. us years to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> we would spend all day And now I'm just going to clip it up for one ticket. Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would rather people. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, it's obviously easier said than done. We have to have all the songs and shit. But, but. just to even get to the point <laughs> to knowing to do that. Yeah, like that's to be able to skip those steps and just take that. You just put someone way ahead of where you guys were when you started. You know what I mean? For like sure. You just help someone out. Crazy. And like, I, I mean, in this Lazy Susan Records is what we're calling this vicinity. And we're looking for more artists, you know, and we have knowledge that we can help them with. I'm sure they have knowledge we can help them with and just like grow together. Mm-hmm. For sure. Is the goal. Fuck yeah. Right now it's just us and Frugal and kind of no chase. You yeah, know? they're they're definitely adjacent right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck yeah. Are they part of like a label at all or anything? Or everything they release has just been. It seems like they're just like it's, I mean, there's five of them. You know, mm-hmm. like three producers and two artists. There might be two and three. But that's another thing we found. Like if the people we work with, they're doing multiple things. They're not just you know, singing, like they, they're working video or they can edit video or frugal's like learning blender, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. just having all these different things to bring to the table. It seems like it's a necessity at this point. Like Jean Louis, he was like, next time I come, like, it's just going to be content. Like I'll shoot hella shit for you guys. And I was like, please do. Cause his music videos for Noches 
formerly known as Cook Thug List. They got a bunch of videos too. They're so sick. Like yeah. I was a fucking fan before we even became good friends. Yeah, his shit's raw. Yeah, really good. Yeah, it almost seems like to like make it, you need you have to be good at it. You have to be able to edit your own video after you just engineered your own session. You know. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. I'm fucking stoned to the bone now. Let's yeah, go to H E B. We're going to H E B. Getting some rice triangles. This is perfect. Hell yeah. This is perfect. But that this is a two fantastic podcasts. Unfortunately, lost video to the Fon and Dolo one, which I'm still it's irking me a little bit, but I'll get over it. And it'll and okay. it'll uh it'll come out and people will be able to hear what was said. And this pod has been fantastic as well. This is good. Nice. I love coming on the pod. I love having you guys on the pod. I, I, I was going to make a jizz joke there, but I'm a better man now. Yeah. Nah, let, him, let us have it. <laughs> <laughs> I went back to like the first time we were on. I was just like. You watched it? I, I just like skimmed through it. With that, it was at the table, right? I was at the table. And the I, mics were low. The sound was bad. Yeah. I had, yeah. like, short hair and long earrings, and I was, like, chunkier. And it was just, like, I feel like we are kind of awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that first one, it, it's definitely scary. Yeah. But then when you just think about it, like, this is just what we'd be talking about. Chilling, yeah. Yeah. It's really fun. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited to see this room when it's done, bro. Bro, it's yeah. going to be so gonna sick. Be dope. It just feels, even just being in here. It's going to be fucking unreal. With, even with fucking when this is on this wall and this is what i'm looking at at all around like i don't know if we're gonna do it on that wall then you should i think we're just gonna do panel yeah i think we're just gonna do panels. and the door wouldn't be able to open that too oh yeah you have to leave a gap for the door yeah i just want to be all right i'll just have to look this way i just want to be surrounded by books <laughs> yeah i mean so just the, couch the couch is going to be there so you'll have books on both sides of you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then yeah, yeah. the speakers and, like, some nice panels. It's fucking Re- sick. Reading a sexy romantic novel. I flipped in some of those, and it was like... They go pretty talking hard. Talking about fellatio, pretty pretty tough. I was getting bricked up reading them. Were they were they getting you going? A few of them, I was like, whoa. I found 50, 50 Shades of Grey somewhere up there. First page I turned to. She's getting spanked. She's loving it. So was I. <laughs> I made him read it out. Yeah. When we were stacking them, I would read almost every title out loud. It was making me sweat ones. a little bit. <laughs> Is there anyone that you pulled out and you were like, like this, the fact that I just picked this up and this is what I went through today and like it's it's a beautiful like connection. Like I need, I feel like I need to read this. A few of them were picked out. <laughs> yeah, I don't but know where they're they are. mainly they're only <laughs> they're mainly picture books that we kept. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you like the art um, in them? I don't know. I, you kind of get desensitized after you stack fucking 5,000 books. I found like a childhood book and I set it aside, but it's probably in there now. Yeah. And that too. It was just like so hardy. You're like, oh, I'm going to save this. Put it over there next to other pile of thousands of books. And I was like, oh, but it's like the perfect size for the one right here. Yeah. To me, they're not really books anymore. They're just, they're just bricks. <laughs> you Which fucking <laughs> desensitize yourself from yeah, educational like, writings. <laughs> you yeah. see a book and you just think it's a brick. I mean, some of these we were in here for like eight hours a day at some point, and you're just like mindlessly like just you know glue and fucking stick and glue it, and yeah. stick. This is done. <clears throat> this wall's done. They can't see. But if you had to guess, how many hours did you put in so far? Um, I did this wall. Uh, Frugal, Frugal, and I did this wall. And it took us like three. Probably the, just this wall probably took us like twenty four hours. Two of us, all together. Yeah, like three hours, full days. Right. Um, and then that one took two days, right? Just about. That it's, one me and Frugal did took a whole day, like ten. That hours. we ripped down, yeah. yeah. That we ripped down. So a couple days straight of work. I got probably you know. And, I mean, we still got to stuff the ceiling. You remember stuff in the ceiling? Oh, I remember sure. watching Tanner stuff most of it. I wasn't there that day. So <laughs> <laughs> it was me and fiberglass in the back. I was like, room. bro, I, what am I doing here? I'm, like, <laughs> I'm fucking 33, getting fiberglass in the back of my throat. With some fucking kid. At some weird place that I don't know how I ended up here. <laughs> in another city with yeah. some fucking... That is funny. You were d- we were down though. Yeah. No, I, honestly, building like putting in the floor in that back thing, putting the, the panels together, doing all that shit. 
was so much fun. Just yeah, getting high and working and like yes. completing a task and kicking it with the boys. Yeah. I fucking sometimes I'm at home and I'm like, damn, I want to like build something with the boys. I miss fucking every like, time we do something with you not here, we're all like, oh, I wish Zach was that, here. Dude, yeah. all the time, like <laughs> Zach would fucking love this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> crazy. Like when we tore down the wall in the other studio, that shit was sick. Yeah, oh, yeah. The booth. Yeah, yeah. Just oh, fucking that's yanking sick. off wood. That's sick. Fuck that's yeah. Sick. All our shirts were off. It was just dusty. Yeah. <laughs> Stepping on nails. Yeah, it was sick. Anytime, was awesome. anytime something it doesn't go according to plan and we have to pivot, we have to be like, Tanner, what do we do here? <laughs> yeah. Can you do this for us? We fucked this up. Yeah. Dude, Frugal will like, he was like taking out, his job was to take the trash. Like just whatever we <laughs> tore off, he just had to take it to the dumpster. Yeah. And I, he had a big ass box of shit and I go out there and he's putting in one piece at a time. <laughs> And I'm like, bro. And he's got like thick gloves on. Yes, and I are taking, the like, only guy with gloves. We're like shirtless, taking armfuls of stapled planks yeah. with yeah. nails and staples sticking out of them, and just dropping them. Yeah. And Frugal's just like, and then it'll just be gone. I'm just like, Where did he go? Yeah. I'm like, you've been taking this one box trash out for 45 minutes. Yeah, I played overcooked with him. I know. Yeah. <laughs> he gets he distracted. He, he gets malfunctioned, dude. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. It's yeah. the best one. Even if it's like something where you're like, "What the fuck?" It's like that person just being themselves. Just, you know yeah, how he yeah. is. It's the best. It yeah. exposes your true self for yeah. sure. It, it, working we're as a like team. ten minutes in, and he goes, "Dude, I'm not made for demolition." <laughs> when it was his idea, when it was, he was literally like, "Guys, let's just like get an hour in right now." Just boom, like I started taking shit off. He's like, "Oh, we're getting after it, yeah." And a few minutes in, he's just like, "Dude." I don't know. I don't know about this. Like, you guys want to take a break? I'll yeah. Like- you guys trying to take a smoke break? Bro, we just started. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, but That's it incredible. does make it entertaining. I'm yeah, fucking dude, mad I didn't is. get to see that fool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want him to come to Chicago. Entice him. We need yeah, to set sure. up a show. Yeah. This is what we need to do. We need to set up a show where you guys can come out, mm-hmm. and then Frug- Frugal can come, do a big fucking fun party. Oh, uh, yeah. What, play where would, where music would music for people. Where would a show be at? I don't know. Maybe Even something like really club, cool. Like a club, like a mixed signals vibe. Yeah, yeah, I think a, a club. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. club for sure. Establishment, not like a theater that we rent out and do ourselves. Yeah. Um, although, that's coming. For yeah. sure. That'd be sick. Come on. Like, yeah, that'd be super sick. But uh, there's a spot called Shore Club that's on the beach. It's like a pop up kind of just opens when the beach is open. And it's a dope ass little beach club. That's cool. It'd be sick to do something there for sure. I'm gonna go uh, try and play there. I was talking to the dude who owns it. He saw he like commented on one of the podcast clips or something, and then I was talking to him like asking him about Shore Club and shit for the summer, and he was talking about doing something. So. That sounds awesome. That'd be a sick ass show. Quick, yeah, let's run it. Quick shout out to Frugal. He, I played quite a few shows with him, being his guitarist, oh, like a standing. Yeah, you guitarist. guys were just in uh, Austin. We doing did South by Southwest. Two South by Southwest shows, and he was incredible. He yeah, you said it, you said it was his best performance. Yeah, absolutely, we yeah. totally. It was it was like right in the pocket. There's some. There have been some past concerts where he's like, oh, the band wasn't tight, so I had to overcompensate. And he's like yelling on stage, just going crazy. But this, he was like dancing. He had sauce spilling out the top. He was fucking singing on pitch. Damn. He didn't miss a word, didn't miss a beat. He was locked in. The bull shows. Fucking, play, we opened for the Plain White Tees, and they were jamming, filming on their phones and shit. And we talked to both of them before and after, and they were just like, yo, you Frugal's fucking sick. I think they just generalized that both of us were frugal, but I I was like, I'm just his guitarist. I'm in another group, yada, yada. Yeah. But they were like, even for me on the side, they were like, your guitar playing was really good. And I was like, uh, like the plain white tees <laughs> guitarist told me that. That's He's sick. like, bro, you were like, there were some things you were doing I've never heard before. He's like, you guys were hard to follow. And I was like, Jesus Christ. That's sick. And then at one point, this is also describes Frugal. Fucking at this point, the place was packed. It was right before they sang "Hey There, Delilah." Everyone knew it was coming. He goes, "Shout out to Frugal, by the way." Everyone cheered, and I turned. I was like, "Where is he?" And he's just like talking in some girl's neck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I ran up to him. I was like, "Hey, they just shouted you out." And he goes, 
oh, that's me. Everybody was already <laughs> walked back to the front. Hey, it, was, it was hilarious. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so but, sick. Yeah, you did dude, really good. Frugs. It was a blast. Yeah, yeah, did really good. That's tight. Dude. There were some people there that they were like, "We are bro, frugal." They were like, uh, "They were like, bro, I fall. I, I went to Shazam your stuff, and I already liked your songs on Spotify." And there were people there that didn't even know him that they were like singing his songs and shit. It was really cool. That's sick. Yeah, he's famous to me. He's fa- yeah, he's 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 the famous one. He's we'll the catch famous up. homie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll catch up. He's our friend with clout. Yeah, that's dope. Right next to you. Yeah. 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 Spraying champagne on myself. Yeah. On Georgie's balcony. Mm. I mean, sick. we're basically best friends with Diplo, Plain White Tees. Yeah. Anthony Green <laughs> of Circus Survive. I don't know. I don't know what to say, dude. Hell yeah, Tom and Tim. If y'all are watching this, man, that was a. <laughs> I know them by their first name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. They no big they deal. actually said they're like, yo, let's we're here in Austin. Let's write a song together. And I, I, uh, I had a heart palpitation when he said that. <laughs> yeah, it was everyone incredible. loved that song at one point. Bro, it was one of the most famous songs of the late two thousands. Right. Hey there, Delilah. Yeah. Yeah. Let's make a remix, dude. Yeah. And send it to him. And even some of their other songs, I was like, I fucking forgot they sang this. And it was just like one of songs from my teenage years. Let's make a bass remix. That'd be sick. (laughs) You guys did the, like, the no handlebar shit. I feel like you could do Hey There, Delilah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know what we need to repost is the explosive bass remix. Yeah. Because that's just like Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Hey There, Delilah could definitely be like a down-tempo house music. Yeah. Hey There, Delilah. Stop. Yeah, that would go Some hard. Smooth chords. That's a that that would go hard. That's a club strong hit right there. Club strong hit. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what that is. A lot of our music is very club strong esque. Yeah. Holy I'm shit! Just, I'm just thinking of Hey There Delilah remixes in my. Let's head. go make it, dude. Let's get out of here. I feel like yeah. I was just staring at my leg for twenty <laughs> seconds, just thinking about it. I'm so stoned. I've gone. I feel like I've lived. Three lives in the last 20 minutes. <laughs> Dude, I, I didn't know where to put out the blunt, and I was just holding on to it forever. And it started to burn my finger. I was like, hands. oh, fuck, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I like, I'm oh, like shit. trying. That's like dude. next level. I wonder if you could do a time lapse because it was definitely in my hand for a fucking minute, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, just fuck. smoke into the bone." <laughs> I'm just intrigued with Tanner's stories. He's telling us about dude, fucking that shit's so South sick. by Southwest. There. My boy so cool. Big Frugs. We're fucking locked in, and I You're was burning like, your fingertips off to commit more crimes. Yeah, and my my brother was in town. That was the first time he came out to see where I lived. And he came on a good weekend. He met, he shook hands with the plain white tees. That's fucking right. Your brother probably went home like, damn, bro. Like, I, I see, I knew Tanner was like doing shit out there, but he's yeah. like, it was definitely my boy's like, out here. It right was definitely now. a lot. Cause like, you know, other people are coming in town. We're all doing shit. We, we got it. He's, I'm taking him to rehearsal. He's got to come to all my shows. <laughs> and he's like super shy. So he's not like the one to be like down for whatever. Yeah. You know, but he, you know, he got a couple high noons in him and he was shaking that ass a little. It was cool. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> that was fun partying yeah. with him. I mean, he's we funny did. too. He did his Trump impression. That was pretty. Yeah. He's, pretty he's good. hilarious once, you know, he warms up, but yeah. he's, he's Fuck the yeah. fucking man. Yeah. That's that our dope. blood, dude. Morgan Oregon, dude. Morgan Oregon. He's got yeah, it. Speaking of the Morgan Oregon, I got to drain my shit again, bro. All right. Same. Should All right, we let's, let's get out of here. Yeah, let's, Guys, it. let's really wrap subscribe it. Subscribe to the Patreon. Subscribe like to the Patreon. Subscribe. That's a great lead in. I like that. Diamond Cut's going to really appreciate it because I normally forget. Patreon.com slash Party with Strategy. Extra content. Every single week, you get an extra bonus episode. That's four extra episodes a month for $5. Great deal. In a in a climate where it's it's that's, hard to that's find less a deal. than two dollars an episode. It's that's yeah, that's crazy. Or you can pay a little more for the exclusive explicit <laughs> content. You know, Pornhub's down here in Texas. <laughs> no, if dude, you need to see <laughs> some, you know, ex- ex- explicit content, subscribe to the page. Dim- Diamond Cut, I'm coming for your job, yeah. dude. That's Uh-oh. amazing. I've never ever um, promoted that before really thank you for that you're welcome (laughs) (laughs) yeah like all of the old when i first started the patreon and put up like all the send nude shit yeah and like all the stuff stickers i did in texas and stuff it's all on there and i i I asked my girl i was like my patreon has like two extra tiers that are not podcast shit and it's like all old videos and shit i was like do you care 
I just keep it up there? And she was like, no, nah, I don't care. So, so all you, the old that strategy back, videos are on your Patreon? Not all of them, but for like the year that I was really going hard on the Patreon, there's like a year worth of uh, back cataloged send nudes-ish kind of videos. I've, I've never seen that. I'll have to check it out. It's a good time, if we're going to be honest. <laughs> it's a, it's It's fun. You should have put everything on there when you retired. I should have, but I didn't want to like go through it. Maybe one day. I mean, like, is it still? Yeah. I deleted everything off of my phone, off of like the phone that I carry with me. But I know that I have some old phones in the crib that have years worth of fuckery on them. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, you can see that on patreoncom slash strategy. Thank you guys for joining me, mm-hmm. dropping gems us. on the world. I mean, if all goes to plan. And you guys take off like you're supposed to. This video is taking off with you. So yeah. you're gonna want to come all the time. Time. <laughs> People are gonna see it, and they're gonna be able to soak up the game that you've given them, and that is what God wants and appreciates. For sure. Welcome to church. Amen. I was about to start singing the song. What song? Welcome to church. Oh, <laughs> take me to church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joel Osteen. All right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the other thing that Diamond Cut needs me to do Subscribe to the channel If you're on YouTube Drop a little comment on the video Like the video Algorithm activating activity That's what we like to see here mm-hmm. On the Party with Strategy podcast Featuring Silas Morgan Tanner Morgan A.K.A. No Good They're my uh, most creative friends Thank oh, you guys oh for joining gosh. us well, we're going to end this episode with the teary-eyed Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, Thank I'm just you. fucking high, dude. <laughs> it's the weed, bro. It's the weed. Yeah, I'm not crying. One time my brother told me, the weed makes you soft as fuck. I've never experienced that. <laughs> the, weed, <laughs> the weed turns me soft. It's crazy. I'm hard as a rock. Yeah, right yeah. Now. <laughs> Why do you think Let's my go. fucking arm's over my shit, dude? Let's go. <laughs> Let get along. No, I'm, I'm good. For right All right, now. I got to piss. Thank you, guys. We'll All see right. you next time. Bye. Let's go, champ. Well, all right, how right? Battle raps cause I've shaken grown men To the point that they can't even face their own friends ha. That's why they rhyme about jewels, not life Cause the ice on which they skating is so thin That's what I love about the human soul It'll usually show when the truth ain't told ha. Use a lie